what is going on everybody dark and windy back at it again with another video now i know it's been a while but as promised we're back here on my wiki and this time we're gonna go through my generation three last time we finished off my generation two so it's only it's only natural that we continue forward and we're gonna start right here in generation three also known as the kaisek region now kaisek comes from kaseki um if I remember correctly, Kaseki came from, I don't even remember, but um, let me do a quick Google Translate. Cause this, is where, this, is where, this is usually how I get my uh, the names from my regions. Usually I just find something, then Japanese, I say a word in Japanese and just shorten it or rearrange the words. So let's see, I got it from Kaseki, which means miracle. Okay, so yeah. So essentially Gen 3, Kaisek, it comes from Kaseki. So it's the miracle region, essentially. And I don't know why I named it that. It, well, yeah, I don't. I don't really know, but it is what it is. That's just how it came from in my young teenage mind. But we're gonna go on and get started with Dynot. All right, so Dynot, if this loads, okay. So Dynot is the coconut Pokemon. It's essentially just a dinosaur with a coconut with coconut armor. That was pretty. I wanted to do something with coconuts. Um, there's no specific reason why, but it was just something that I feel like I wanted to do. Something that was kind of out of the ordinary or weird. That's usually my go-to when it comes to my starter designs or design my designs in general. I enjoy doing stuff that's kind of out of the ordinary. Animals that you never heard of. Combinations you may, you may have never thought about. That's usually my go-to thing. So yeah, we got Dynite here. Um, he, he's obviously one of the mods that I still need to go back and redo based on how the artwork is. Like, you can see how the shading isn't as, well, it looks okay, but it's not as clean as I want it to be. And this is the time where I use a lot of texture. Like, I could I could partially see a bit of, like, the grainy texture I have underneath it. Though that just me being because of my computer screen being kind of messed up. <laughs> but, eh, it is what it is. That's Dynite. Now, Conutter, pretty much just uh, it's a situation where, well, so as some people may claim, it just gets bigger. Something that's a common complaint with people when it comes to real Pokemon designs. It's kind of it's the, kind of a stupid complaint if you ask me, but people are gonna feel how they feel. They have their own purposes. I think it's stupid. They may not. So, yeah, Conutter is just like a. It's pretty much a Charmander the Charmeleon kind of deal, but it's all the same color. Like, Konoda is just a bigger Dynot. Not really much to talk about. Not much to write home about or anything. And then we have Eratalore. Now, this is, now Eratalore, I remember having partially taken some inspiration by Chestnut because this is around the time where Gen 6 started to get revealed and everything like that. Like, you can see it by how the shell is um, around his back and connected to the front. I got that partially from Chestnut. Like, my whole deal with my entire project is that I'm trying not to be inspired, too inspired by official Pokemon or have things that are too similar to them. Like, I'm usually just using the Bulbapedia format and the terminology and all that just because it's a project that's, that's how it started. But at the end of the day, these are all my own things. So, when I have Whenever I get around to redesigning it, it's gonna it's probably not gonna have that or it may. I mean I don't know. I have a lot of stuff that has to redesign. So yeah, Eratalore, but then yeah, as as of right now, Eratalore is mm, not that great. Like the coconut thing is in like the the way I did the fuzz on here is kind of weird. It's just awkward. Um I have the fang thing like Having the fangs be outward and pointing upward is kind of a signature thing that I like to I like to do for some reason. It's just something that I find it's just like a design trait that I find appealing, which is why I tend to use it a lot. But whenever I get around to redesigning it, it'll probably look a lot different. Now for the next one, we have my fire starter, Colidi, a fire koala. Now, hmm. There's not much for me to say about Coalidi other than I like its design as it is right now, but it it's already different and needs some fine tuning, of course. Um, but yeah, there's not much to really write home about. It's just the confidence Pokemon. This entire line is pretty much just gonna be about confidence and things like that. But even though Coalidi 
it should like when I redesign it or whatever it's kind of it's probably going to be start off more wimpy I guess and then grow up to be more determined but as of right now Coleed is okay I like how uh, the nose is kind of like an air vents and everything like that uh, the color scheme is all right and it kind of it kind of uh, gives you an idea of where it's going to go but not entirely I guess because next up we have Frostoala, which is my first fire ice type, I'm pretty sure, yeah. So, yeah, Frostoala is, mm, like, it's okay, but the white, the blue-white ice fur on the top of his head is kind of a thing that is kind of overdone, I feel. But it's, it, it works, and I may keep it when I redesign, but it's... It needs more, so like it needs more white on its body, on its body, or other parts of the body other than the head. Unless I just want the head to just completely stand out. But mm, right now it's okay. Let's see. Let's look at the deck entry. Um, if they have a weak trainer, they will be disobedient, prompting most trainers to release them to torturous enemies. It will make a cold environment and then burn them to give an intense scalding feeling all over their body. It's okay. Yeah, that, that was my teenage edginess coming out. <laughs> but, yeah, Frostwall is a pretty pretty decent mon. Uh, I, I'm realizing that I didn't give the face any kind of shading aside from, like, this tuft over here and this ear over here. So, that's bad on my part. Uh, other than that, I, can't have, I don't really have much else to say about it. So, we can move on to the final evolution of Coalidi Pioriala. Now... Yeah, this definitely needs some work. Um, you can see just how the line work is. Like, the way the fur is arranged right here, it may be reminiscent of how they did it back in the day for a foot for a older Pokemon when they used to have, before they started to become a bit more clean with it. But it's like, oh, oh, now that I'm looking, I'm looking at the neck and it's just, yeah, it doesn't look that good. And how I did this is kind of the the white on the edge of the orange tail does like peach. It's like a peaches and cream kind of deal, but at the same time, it's not. It's kind of awkward and not really that appealing to me. So yeah, that definitely needs to be reworked. Uh, but Pyoreal is pretty strong, I'll say. Like it's, it, it'd be a pretty strong partner if it was if it was real or if I decided to make an actual like game with any of these mods, it'll be, it'll be pretty strong, I'd say. Next up, we have Kamaden, which is a camel. And, oh my word, this definitely is a, is a design that I need to revisit because I really don't enjoy it that much. Like, the shading is too yellow. Like, I know that they use, like, natural yellow is shading for highlights for the official pokemon sometimes but here it just doesn't feel right with how but the, the shade of blue that i used and the purple and everything like it's just really it's just really weird for me i'll say mm, and it's not there's nothing really special about it at all but then, but then again, I can't keep doing this because I keep I can't keep saying this because this was when I was in my teenage years, like 13, 14, 15. This is when I that, that's when I made a, a vast majority of all these designs. So I can't really beat myself too much about it. But just looking back on it is still kind of a cringy thing. But yeah, next up we have hum moist, <laughs> moist. I like I like how a lot of people get like don't enjoy that word. And oh my God, looking at this. <laughs> why what 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 is what what is up with the feet what did i do what did i do with the feet and yeah you can tell that i kind of copy and pasted the feet but that's what like i said i can't beat myself up about it that's how it was back in the day but yeah like mm, like still the shade of blue but now the purple has turned into a gray and it it just feels very flat and it just feels kind of dull hmm I can't really think of much else to say other than it's at, I'm, I'm trying to have adding the more stereotypical Egyptian stuff that most people that most people use when it comes to like designs like camels and stuff like that. But yeah, it's okay. And then Rakudrin, Rakudrin is just 
it's okay. It's a it's a camel with a with a pyramid on its back, and the pyramid just looks slapped on, surrounded by rocks. It's 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 not it's not that great. It's not great at all. And again, copy pasted feet. Um, like this is probably one of the ones that where the artwork is. I think this is one one of the newer artworks. Well, not new new, but this wasn't the first artwork because just I can tell just by how I did the shading. So hold on, let me check. Let's check together. Let's go to the pay. Let's go to the file page and let me see if the original one is still here. And is it? Yes, it is. All right. As we can, okay, so I made, so this one is from 2017, makes sense, when I was around 16, 17, and here we had the original one, fat, like, fat, blobby, round, upper arms and everything, uh, the way that I did the feet is kind of weird, had it, like, had it kind of, like, pigeon toe. well, I can't really, I guess that's the word for it, pigeon toe, where the feet go across from each other, something like that. But whatever the terminology is, that's how I had it for um, the feet. The pyramid is, is 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 certainly more natural, but it still doesn't look that great. It doesn't even really look like a pyramid. It's like an awkward, just blah thing. And yeah, this whole head garb thing, trying to make it look like a pharaoh. It needs. It definitely needed to be reworked, and I can say that I can say that this one, that the current 2017 version, is better. But the natural, the natural feel of the pyramid kind of makes it better on the original. But yeah, I'll have to revisit this one again, of course. All right. Next up, we have Norvisk. Now Norvis, Norvis, and we have Sorak, which is going to be the one that's the counterpart to this one. Those two are the regional rodents. They're based off of the Viscacha, uh, the northern Viscacha and southern Viscacha in particular. Let me go ahead and get y'all, educate y'all right quick. As y'all can see, they're pretty much just dirt and derpy little looking rabbits. Like, yeah, they're pretty much just derpy looking rabbits. <laughs> yeah, but they're they're cute. They're fluffy. They're just they're pretty much just chinchilla like rabbits in some way. And like the difference is, I, th I think the main difference was that the northern viscacha has a longer tail and the southern viscacha has a shorter one. Let's see, nor the northern viscacha, yeah, northern viscachas have uh, a, the longer tails, as you can see here. And the southern viscacha, I think, has the nubby, the, the nubby tail, which is why they'll, that'll reflect more in the designs. Let's see. Yeah, the, the tails are kind of more curved and everything. It's like short and curved and everything. So, yeah, that's what, they, that's what these guys are based off of. So we got Norvisk here. It's kind of pinkish. I, I guess I decided to go with pink and blue. Kind of like, again, this was back when I was just doing things so i guess i did this because i'm think because now i'm thinking of need the nidoran line how nidoran male is pink and purple and everything and nidoran female is bluish and everything and that's how it lines up for these guys so i'm guessing i took in some inspiration for those which will which will definitely need to be uh reworked of course so that's norvisk and i have an evolution offerus offerings and you can most definitely see the inspiration by the ears so yeah like the way I did this shading is kind of reminiscent of how they did it in Gens three and four, in a sense, I'd say. But yeah, I I definitely need to add more to it because it looks kind of bland. It just has like this this kind of uh, pull up uh, over lower half, like a pull up a pull up dress or something like that. Definitely doesn't really have anything else going for it. It's supposed to be a normal fighting type. But I didn't really do anything in particular to actually um, show that. It was just, well, offense is based off of offense. And the counterpart is going to be based off of defense. But this is for offense. So their bodies and powerful, their bodies and power, 
Wow. Okay, so error here. Their bodies are powerful and limber, giving them enough speed to land 30 blows in only one second. They are very powerful Pokemon who won't accept help from anyone or anything. So, yeah, I definitely need to showcase that more instead of just having it be kind of basic. And then we go to the counterparts. We have Sorak, as you can see. Like I said, has the blue and everything. The short curly tail. It's the southern Viscacha. But the eyes are now red and orange, while the other ones were green. Um, and they are, Nor they are rivals with Norvis, so yeah, offense and defense. So yeah, difference is pretty, so Sorak is just kind of, it's pretty generic. And again, back at it again with the Nidoran comparison, because this is essentially the Nidoran male, or quote unquote, original pose from red and blue. So if I can find it, let's go. Let's see. Let's see if I can show you guys what I'm talking about. And well, not even not even just that, but the, this kind of pose, the dream world pose, in a sense. So, yeah, yeah, you y'all y'all could probably tell. But it's okay. It's an okay design. I just need to re re work more with it. And deferent, yeah. It, I tried to do like a half and half thing, like where half of his body is this greenish and the other half is this bare, but it needs more. It's, it just needs more. It's, these Pokemon never back down or give up, even when they've taken a critical amount of damage. They're extremely protective of their trainers and fellow teammates. So, yeah, this, this, this definitely needs to be more defense based. So, I may, when I do it, I may make it more bulky and make the other one make off range more limber still since it's supposed to be defensive so i probably make it need to make it a little bit more bulky when i ever read whenever i do the redesign so next up we have the regional bird hachuba which is based off of the love of love birds and everything like that the the term love birds and just different types of birds as well like the gala now the gala is a kind of parrot that's pink and gray yeah as you can see the pink and gray cockatoo things like that so we have that and then that's pretty much all it was um when it came to the design it was pretty simple i just had the the feathers on the top of its head kind of curl into a heart shape the heart mark on its wing uh there's not much else i can say how made the eyes really blue because i don't know why i just like when i use the blue eyes for things it just makes it feel it makes it feel cuter, more perfect, more precious, things like that. Like big, there are people always talk about big blue eyes, things like that. So I like, so I like, I like that kind of design trait. Next, we have the evolution of Morver, which is, I kind of, I kind of thought about Cupid, I guess, when I did this. So it has more, it has even more heart, heart aesthetic, the heart wing here, heart tail, and it has like more of a kissy a kissy face beak kind of pose and everything curly hair the curly feather hair um what else can i i can't really say much else about it other than it's okay it, i like it and the i could say the uh, i like the original the original design is okay but the current iteration is well actually looking at it now okay so this is the second iteration it's okay not much to say about it um a little less detail a little less feathers and everything but it's okay and the original original oh oh no oh uh, me and these color schemes these color schemes always killed me because <laughs> it was just always so hard to, well not what it wasn't hard but the way i had the way my eyes are or the way i had my computer set up was i have i have cataracts so bright colors usually irritated my eyes so i ended up just making things flatter well not well i kind of made my colors duller and made the, and it kind of made them come off as flat and dull as many people have pointed out rather annoyingly but but yeah that's how it was uh, I like the current iteration, but of course it still needs to be redone a bit more because some just something about it feels off still. Probably the way the eye, the face is set up because it just looks like, yeah, I don't know. It's just something about the head. But it still looks pretty good. 
Now Squawkis, I like Squawkis a lot. I, I partially based it off the Forgate Burrow as well as the Gala, but yeah, I just really, I just really enjoy this design. Uh, it, it, it needs a bit, it needs a bit of touching up with the, how this wing is. Like this wing kind of may feel a bit off, but overall, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good design in my opinion. Um, can't really say much else about it. Just I went, I went more with a hard aesthetic. Um. Uh, Mm, yeah, not much else to say about it. I just really enjoy this design. Uh, like I said, it just needs a bit more touching up, but it's it's pretty good. Now, Parazy. Okay, so Parazy, I remember de actually designing this guy back in middle school. Um, back in the day, it was ba it was named Shockleberry, and its evolution was named Raspic. So I guess I would, it was based off of like raspberries and stuff like that. But as time went on, I decided to just change some stuff up and ba base, try, tried to base it off of something else. And in this case, I based it off of the moon seed plant. So the moon seed plant, if I remember, I, I remember the moon seed plant is kind of like something that gives you like a buzzing sensation or something like that. If I remember correctly, where is it? Uh... Uh, all parts of these plants are known to be poisonous. The principal toxin is alkaloid duracine. The fruit can be fatal. Extreme the fruits, not eating moon seed. Have a single crescent shaped seed. Have round seed. Different. Uh, da, 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 da. Um. Hmm. I remember, like, I remember something about it where it was like a fruit that gives a sing a tingling sensation or something like that, but. I guess I just use this. I, I just turned the poison aspect into like a paralyzing aspect, cause I don't, cause I don't really. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Para, paralysis. Let's see. Uh, ah, moon seeds first call first cause paralysis. That's where I got it from. So it is. So it was because I, I focused on the para paralyzing aspect. So yeah. That's pretty much what this was. This, po this Pokemon secretes a substance that can cause paralysis on contact. So the entire and the entire fruit is kind of pa can paralyze you as poisonous. So that's where that came from. Um, the colors and everything don't really match up right now, so that will probably change upon redesign. And then the same same thing goes for Nerve Vent, aka Ra originally named Raspic. Um, something needs to be changed about it, like the. Mm, it, it, basically, I just focused on these fruits making it being being uh, toxic and causing paralysis. Hmm. I just, I just remember these guys from middle school. <laughs> just I made them, and that was pretty much. I just changed just changed some things as time went on, but that's all I can really say about them right now. Like th like they're interesting for sure, but upon redesign, they could be a bit better. Have the, have their little taser fingies inside of the plant root arm thing. Now we have Shimmy. Now Shimmy is the enclosed Pokemon. It's pretty much based off of a silverfish, like those little those little buggers in Minecraft that always come towards you and cause damage in those cave in the caves and everything. So for here, it is based off of the Shimmy is based off of like the egg, an egg of it. So they remain motion, they remain motionless, and we just wait for our evolution, kind of like Metapod and Kakuna, except you know, not. But yeah, that's pretty much all it is. Just a baby silverfish and an egg. And then we have the its first evolution, Lapismite, color the color eyes Pokemon. For some reason, when it comes to these kind of designs, I just always try to give them some like like with official Pokemon, I try to give them one specific element that stand that makes them stand out or something that makes them kind of special in a way so for here i gave them color eyes i don't know why for some reason i just did and it's a bug and ghost type for some reason um but yeah the, apparently those things the color eyes are actually his brain and it actually has no eyes but yeah there's not much there i can't really it needs to re it just needs to, to be touched on more and then we have the final evolution, Leposark. <sighs> just no, just no. 
like it's on a, it's okay but the way to pose it the pose is set up and again the color eyes i just had to make it stand out somehow and i just added that for for no reason it's kind of weird but it's 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 okay it just needs to be reworked and have some elements touched upon more they have they're supposed to be really smart though they have an extremely high knowledge of the past life as well as the life of others and they have the power to resurrect dead people in pokemon by by adjusting their antenna okay so apparently they can bring things back to life i have like i said like i've said i mentioned numerous times before i have not touched upon a lot of these designs in years so some of their dex entries and stuff that they're supposed to do were more than likely just me slapping stuff on as a teenager and I may actually I may actually either change the dex entries or change the designs to match the dex entries as time goes on because oh because that because that actually sounds interesting but it may be too OP for it for a design like this so yeah that's just Leprosark right now now we have Puruff it evolves into its evolution Roarex starting at level 34 and it's the normal fighting type yeah, we, we really do need more uh, quadrupedal fighting types. They started that in Gen 5, and I'm, I'm glad that they're still doing well. I, I hope that they do more at least. And their deck centuries are pretty simple. They fight each other in order to strengthen themselves, and they attack using sharp claws. Pretty basic. Nothing, nothing special here. And for the design itself, it needs some changes because, as you can obviously see, this is some, this is some purloin type. This is some purloin type stuff having the eyes attached to the nose and everything like that so yeah it definitely needs something it needs something else to that it doesn't end up comparing to purloin and liper and everything like that so and i'm sorry if you heard that i just hit my mic <laughs> but yeah um it's based off of it's supposed to be based off of a liger believe it or not I know it just seems like a basic cat, house cat, but yeah, it, it's supposed to be based off of a liger, and yeah, it's it's just it's just basic and needs something else. Same same for evolution Rorik. It's 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 sure it's it's bulky and everything like that, but that was that was like a big problem that I had. I made a lot of my stuff a lot are very very stocky and bulky, which is fine, but. I need to uh, change it up a bit. Even though ligers pretty much are very bulky, like if you don't know a liger, a liger is pretty much a a hybrid of a lion and a tiger. So yeah, these big bulky guys. So yeah, I need to add some more to it. Since yeah, this is pretty plain. I just gave it these these boots, these fur boots on the back. It doesn't really help anything. I don't know what this tail is supposed to do. And the stripes are pretty much basic, non-existent. But then again, but then again, Raikou and the Center Royal Stripe, well, I can't even say that because they do have, they have more stripes than this. But yeah, it's pretty good. It's, well, not even that good, honestly. Like, again, the eyes are pretty much just liper and purloin type stuff. The stripes, everything don't do much, and it's just uh, it just needs more. It definitely needs more. And I I think this is prob this will probably be the last one I do. I'll see. This yeah, this will probably be the last one that I do. Um, uh, here we have the gerb the gerblitz clone of the region. Um, we have Pakina. It's based off of the. I think it's based off of the what was it the the paka yeah the paka I was gonna I was about to say the the pika or pika but no it's a it's based off of the paka so it's pretty much just in a, a confused little guy the oblivious Pokemon and you can see what a paka is a paka is pretty much just it, the not not the not the act yes it's a rodent of course is is these is these guys. These guys, these cap, these capybara looking guys, uh, they need, they have, they have these spots along their backs. Their faces are kind of capybara-ish to me, at least. And they're just, they're cute little guys. Yeah, they, I don't, I didn't even have the spots on the side. So yeah, definitely needs to, definitely needs some touch-ups. 
and shifts and everything. It can generate sparks by rubbing its fur together. It almost never realizes the kind of situation it is in, whether it be good or bad. So yeah, these guys are just pretty much the oblivious looking just... Like if if they're in the front of a burning building or anything, they won't try. They won't recognize what's going on. They'll just sit there and maybe even die in there. But but they, they even though they could easily get out, things like that. So yeah, that. Mm. Other than that, I can't really say much. It's just a Gerblitz clone for the, for this. It's nothing special. It just needs some touch ups and everything like that. But with that in mind. Uh, I think that's going to be the end of this video. Um, we're, we're back in business. I'm going to try to continue, have a more consistent upload schedule like I used to. Well, not even really consistent. But, yeah, th thanks for thanks for watching. Uh, I hope y'all con continue to enjoy. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time where we will cover the next one, which is Woolish. Something that I actually have something to talk about. So, until then, Dark and Windy out.